everyone. This is Kelly Walmsley and I'm one of the hosts of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt. I'm here today visiting with Dr. John Boney from Penn State. Hey, John. Hey, Kelly. Good morning. Good morning. Um, can you, I guess, tell us a little bit about what your position is at Penn State and what you do? Sure thing. So I'm in the animal science department here at Penn State. I started in 2018. I'm an assistant professor of poultry science. I hold the Vernon E. Norris Faculty Fellow of Poultry Nutrition title, uh, and I serve a 75% extension and 25% teaching role here in the department. And within that extension role, uh, I am asked to do applied research working with our poultry industry here in Pennsylvania. Great. Thanks, John. And fun fact, for those of you that don't know, John and I are actually academic siblings, right? Uh, right. <laughs> um, and, and former Mountaineers, so go years. Um, so first, um, before we get into the research that we're going to discuss today, I want to do a little bit of some rapid fire with you, John. And um, you just tell me the answer, okay? Okay. Skydive or s- scuba? Skydive. Flat or drumette? Flat. Aisle or window seat? Aisle. Bigfoot or Yeti? Bigfoot. <laughs> okay, so the most important one. If you were in if you were in a zombie apocalypse, what poultry nutritionist would you want to be in it with and why? Oh, that's a good one. Uh I'd probably say Bob Lore, and that's because I think I could outrun him. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh sorry, Bob. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Okay, so let's get the business, okay? So I'm really excited. We're going to talk about two pubs that came out of your lab, um, one in the fall and one recently in the spring. They were published in Journal of Applied Poultry Research, and they're both around um, hammer mill screen selection of soybean meal, um, one with particle size and pullet performance effects, and then the other with um, amino acid digestibility, feed milling mixed in, and uh, broiler performance. So really great, timely um, topics. Ready for more sustainable poultry production? New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using Termin 8 supports entric health, leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at www.anatox.com. Let's um, discuss the trials um, briefly and uh, maybe just kind of discuss how they were set up. So there's standard corn and soybean meal based diets um, for both of them. And you use the same soybean meal for both of those um, trials. Is that correct? That's correct. So the, the really the first experiment was we traveled to a local soybean processor here in Pennsylvania uh, and, and we did some work in that processing plant with the different hammer mill screens. Uh, so, so we actually ask them to pull off enough beans to uh, conduct the, the replicated runs in their facility, but also to uh, have enough volume to feed our birds, both broilers and pullets here on campus. Great. And so your big findings um, within pullets, you found no difference between the different um, soybean meal sizes, correct? All right. So there's not a lot of literature uh, out there on pullet performance and developing that ready-to-lay pullet. Uh, and with Dr. Patterson's uh, experience uh, in the layer industry, we thought this would be an, an ideal place to start. Uh, so we wanted to, to go uh, get the beans, come back, and be able to feed these pullets. Um, and if we found interesting results, we thought we might continue uh, into a layer uh, production cycle, uh, but considering the lack of performance results uh, or differences in performance results, uh, we decided let's just stop here. We had great data generated in the processing facility, the soybean processing facility, uh, where we could see really great energy savings by using a larger hammer mill screen, uh, which resulted in a larger soybean meal particle size. Uh, whenever we use those finer soybean or when we use the finer hammer mill screens, uh, it did drive up energy usage and energy cost. Uh, so, so that's why we decided uh, 
to let's just go ahead, feed the pullets, uh, analyze the results and decide if we're going to move forward or not. Sure. And then with the broilers, a little bit different story. So um, when you're taking those different particle sizes, putting them in the feed mill, running some replicated runs and getting electrical energy data, throughput, um, pellet durability, all of those things, um, you, you found some differences there. And then also in the birds and amino acid digestibility and in the response of the birds um, in, in performance, right? So can you discuss that a little bit? Sure thing. So uh, let's start in the feed mill. I want to thank Dr. Mortz, uh, Joe Mortz, for allowing us to come down uh, and use his facility. Uh, he'd probably uh, rather father. <laughs> he, after uh, after this day, he probably would have rather that he said no because there were some challenges running this fine soybean meal, uh, and, and we can talk about that. So uh, yeah, we set this up in a Latin Square design, and we manufacture feed across a couple different days. Uh, in that Latin square design allowed uh, each of those soybean meal particle sizes to uh, hold its own unique place uh, in the replicate, uh, in the runs of, of feed that were manufactured. This is, a, in my opinion, a very uh, scientifically, scientifically sound way uh, to conduct the, the feed manufacture research. What we found there, uh, when the mill was up and running and the measured variables uh, that, that we measured and analyzed, we didn't see any differences between the fine, medium, or coarse soybean meal. But uh, when we were there, what, what we did notice, uh, and it was quite apparent, is that the fine soybean meal created a lot of challenges in feed conveyance. Uh, so the feed, leaving the feed mixer going, uh, you know, up the auger and above into the surge bin, uh, that was quite a lengthy process. Uh, there was lots of plugging and bridging. And then when it was time to pass the feed through the die, uh, there was some plugging that occurred. Uh, so, so it didn't show up in the variables that we measured, but, but certainly uh, the, the reality of the situation was there were impacts to feed processing. Um, and then when we looked at uh, hot pellet temperatures and production rates, those things stayed uh, constant. But of course, those were measured by collecting feed uh, as it was, was coming out of the pellet die. Uh, while it was up and running efficiently. Uh, so, so there's where we have to kind of sort through the data and, and what shows up on paper uh, doesn't always really reflect what happened in reality. So that's an important finding in this. When we looked at pellet quality, the fine soybean meal did, uh, it did have a significant impact in pellet quality. So uh, those finer particles, we think it filled some of the, uh, the space in the pellet when it was compressed. Uh, and there was some protein gelation that occurred, allowing for an improvement in pellet durability. Mind you, it, it was uh, relatively small, the, the improvement, but it was a statistical improvement in uh, the new Holman pellet tester test, the PDI test, as well as the modified PDI test. Oh, that's very interesting. <clears throat> and so then with the birds. Sure. So we, we uh, decided that we would uh, pellet this feed, uh, we would then feed it to broilers for a 42-day grow out from start uh, to market weight. And what we found here was that uh, the birds fed the coarse soybean meal. Uh, they did have an improved feed efficiency. Uh, however, those on the fine soybean meal uh, had an increased feed intake and an increased body weight gain. Uh, but that came at the expense of amino acid digestibility, which is something else that we measured. Uh, we had... Uh, when, when comparing the fine to the coarse soybean meal, particle size, uh, digestible lysine was, was impacted by about 3%. Threonine uh, was reduced by about 11% uh, when comparing the coarse to the fine soybean meal. So we think that that's where the feed efficiency, our uh, feed conversion ratio differences uh, ma ma were manifested. Uh, we, we had increased feed intake, increased uh, body weight gain with fine soybean meal, but uh, they did this because there was this reduction in amino acid digestibility. Uh, and some of that work is supported in, in previous literature. Elevate bird well-being and improve profitability with Cargill's tailored nutrient solutions that deliver performance. Cargill is leading through applied nutrition, leveraging deep nutrient insights and understanding of the animal's nutrient requirements to achieve your production and performance goals. 
So um, since we are the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt uh, Podcast, one last question. Jackie Chan or Chuck Norris? Chuck Norris all day. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Thank you, Dr. John Boney at Penn State. Appreciate you joining us today. And um, really appreciate all of your hard work and your students. Thanks, Kelly. All right. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition-related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it, or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.